Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back, and thanks for joining us. You're tuned to the About Sparta podcast brought to you by the good folks of the New Amendment. You can catch us on Beyond Big Ten on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. But before we get started, Trav, tell me, how was your weekend? Ray Mees, what it do? It was good, It no, was good, man. Uh, no, I had a great weekend, man. You know, uh, my weekends are full of basketball games with my son and coaching this little basketball team. So I had a great weekend, uh, ready to get back at it for a great weekend. Good show today. Nice, man. Nice. I, I also had a great weekend. Um, as long as the Spartans are winning, man, it, the weekend seems to get better and better. So um, I was able to go to that Michigan game and uh, be a part of the reunion, seeing all the old faces uh, from Steve Smith to Mo Cleaves and Mo Pete. Um, got the chance to sit by Freaky Zeke, man. Uh, him and Nitro <laughs> and, uh, and, and Big, oh, and big awesome. Redhead Navick. So, man, we had a blast, man. The game was, I, I got to bring the family out. Uh, my son got to experience the, the rivalry. So, man, it was a great weekend, man. He has got the, got the punch on Trey a little bit and, and vice versa. So, it was a nice, fun weekend. Uh, hey, I know that got to be great for you, Ray, because you haven't been back to a game in a long time. Man, so man, to bring your family that, and to be around everybody reunion weekend, exactly. that's dope. It, it, it was super dope because, like you said, man, I hadn't been back in, in such a long time. I think the last game I, I went to, Zell was playing. <laughs> then wow. Zell, and they were playing, yeah. I think, Ohio State. And, and, and Zell ended up having yeah. a good game. So, uh, man, it's been that long. So it, it was it was great just to be out there and, and meet with the guys and, you know, be able to shoot the shit a little bit. So it was fun. For sure. Yeah, man. So uh, now now let's tip things off. <laughs> On Saturday, January 7th, we played we played the most anticipated and sought-after sought game of the regular season. Now, for those who didn't watch the game, don't care about this rivalry, or just live under a damn rock, this is the game we as Spartans live and die for. Michigan versus Michigan State. So if you watch basketball mainly for dunks and highlights, this game just wasn't for you. Um, Trav, what was your take on the Spartans' victory against our little brothers, Michigan? Little brother. <laughs> that's the that's the biggest thing right now. Little brother. Little bro. But it was little bros. <laughs> Man, like you just said, we talked about in our last edition that rivalry games, throw the stats out. It don't matter the records. It's a rivalry game. And for us, it was a reunion game as well. So it was all the Spartans back. It was a great crowd. Um, and playing Michigan just brings a different level of intensity. So I thought the game was great. It was a hard-fought game. It was a little muggy, right, physical. Um, game could have went either way. But we pulled out. We made some really big plays at the end. Three guys, man, played really well. I thought it was really good for us. I thought A.J. was really good. 15 points, six assists, four rebounds. He's continuing to be kind of that engine for us. Um, I love Malik Hall in 23 minutes. Thought he played really well coming off that bench. I think he's settling into that kind of role. He had 15 points. And um, Tyson Walker, I think Tyson Walker played really well for us, 14 points. Again, what he does, he's bringing consistency. And I kind of spoke to you earlier about like that Drew Nice will kind of affect with him. Exactly. Uh, so I'm loving what he's bringing for us. So those three guys I thought was really good for us. I, I would have to agree with you, man. Um, the guys, the guys played their heart out. Uh, but in my opinion, I will say the player of the game, I'm going to change it up a little bit. I got to give it to Izzo, uh, believe it or not. Uh, whenever you have a low scoring game um, that's dictated and set, uh, by by a lot of half court play, um, you have to depend on your X's and O's, and that's exactly what what happened in this game. Uh, is is does what he always does, um, especially around March. He brings out that playbook and and and, and guys execute it. Um, you can tell towards the end we we went into a little drought for for about three four minutes. Um, but once we came out of that draw, we were able to execute and uh, get the victory. So um, it was great, man. It was great. Um, speaking of X's and O's, let's go into our X's and O's segment. Yeah, so I'm going to extend on you real quick. Like you said, the player of the game to you was Coach Izzo, right? And obviously playing there, we know the player of the game, when Coach Izzo gets it, the assistants get it. 
right? So I would say that whole coaching staff, Great. right? Great like point. they, right? They're understanding the big thing about our group, and we we'll speak on it as we're moving forward in these, um, as we're talking. But our veteran leadership, right? We have great veteran leadership, which allows us to, you know, have a game that's kind of physical, is getting down to the end, and we're able to take over. You know, if you think about our last few games, it's been in for the last, I think the last four out of five games has been decided in single digits. So um, our coaching staff, so just to kind of like jump on with you, I love the coaches or player of the game, but I'm going to give you the whole staff because we made some really good plays and some good calls. And we know how those huddles get. They can get oh, kind of aggressive and, and intense. intense. So uh, to keep everybody, you know, level-headed, those assistant coaches and everybody play a huge role for us. I, I, I got to agree with you uh, uh, once again. Um, but for the offensive player of the game, for me, um, I think it had to be Hawk, man. Hawk is setting the tone right now. He led the way with 15, 4, and 6, like you said. And it's, I think it's just his, his leadership. Um, he's coming into his own. He's making plays. He's posting up. He's getting to the sweet spots. He's he's getting to the line. He's knocking down free throws late in the game. Man, Hall is having a great year so far. Um, but my X factor for this game was Malik Hall. Um, Joey Hauser really didn't shoot the ball like he's used to shooting it. But Malik, uh, no worries because Malik Hall was there and he filled in uh, for Joey. Um, he, and he filled that void for for Joey that that was struggling with a shot a little bit. So man, yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to touch a can I touch a little? I want to say before we go, can I touch a little bit on that AJ thing? I, I think you're right, man. Like that offensive player of the game, AJ. I love his swagger. swagger I think when smooth. he has a certain level, like he got that that East Coast toughness swagger about him. I think they call him WAP. You know, like his little <laughs> nickname. So he got his swag right, and I think when he has a certain level of swagger, which he's been playing with it gives our whole team another level of confidence, right? And right. then just to kind of go, like Joey didn't shoot the ball as well, but the one thing I wanted to speak to our listeners about, and this is to any player, right? Joey has seven points and 10 rebounds. He was one for seven from the three-point line. He hasn't shot the ball well in the last two games, right? But he played 34 minutes. And we talked about this, like we know a guy – that maybe not be shooting well. A lot of guys that don't shoot the ball well, it starts to affect other parts of their game. For Joey to play 34 minutes and shoot the ball one for seven from the three-point line, he's doing other things to equal winning. To get right? it off, yeah. He's a, to, to get it off of it. So, like, he's figuring it out. Like, you don't always have a good game. So, I'm proud of Joey for not shooting the ball as well. In a big game like that, he could have easily said – this is my last game against Michigan. What the hell am I going to do? Instead, he figured it out, made some winning plays for us, defensive stops, communicating with guys, and had that calming presence that he does bring to the team. Well, Trav, that's, I think that's just the, the signs of a winner, man. Joey, Joey has yep. won on, on many different teams, and he has that experience now where he doesn't need to necessarily score the ball a ton to be effective in the game. And that's what he's doing. He's rebounding. Um, he's getting a couple of assists, um, and he's just – it's not a its not a bad shot that that Joey takes. Like, I, I've never seen this guy take a bad shot. He's reading the game well, and he's playing well, and, and, and these guys are rolling right now. Um, but before yeah. we switch up segments, who did you have for your defensive player of the game? Yeah, so my defensive player of the game was Jaden Atkins. Like, Jaden brings a certain level of intensity, physicality, that when he's on his like when he's on his high horse or he's rolling the way he needs to be rolling, like it just again it brings another level of intensity and aggressiveness to our group. And the way that he plays defense, you know, I, I, I'm tagging him right now. I'm not sure if it's gonna happen this year, but I think before he leaves, right? I think he has the opportunity to be defensive player of the year easily. Um, he yeah. has all the potential. He's very athletic. Um, He's strong, and I, he, he plays with a certain level of aggressive uh, um, aggression that you got to have to be a great defender. Like like we said off air, man, I, I think the best comparison, in my opinion, is, is, is Chris Kramer. Um, he brings yeah. that the defensive um, energy. Uh, he's liable to, to, to rip you at half court and take off and dunk on your head. Dunk on you. Yeah, huh. you know what I mean? So yeah. he brings those – 
same intangibles that Chris did, uh, who was a heck of a player for Purdue uh, back when we were in school. So, uh, where am I? Oh, but we can't yeah, no forget. Doubt. I'm sorry. We cannot forget. Uh, we got to shout out Michigan. Uh, Dickinson ended up having 18 7. Uh, Bufkin ended up with 15 and 2. And Howard, Jet Howard, 10 3 and 2. Uh, those guys put up a great fight. Uh, Dickinson is just, man, he's a mountain. Being able to see this guy in person, uh, you can teach a lot of things, but you cannot teach height. And that guy is huge. 7'1", every bit of 7'1". Um, what I really like about Dickinson, man, he has great touch, a great feel for the game. Um, I think he struggled uh, with a shot a little bit early, but um, I think he, this guy is going to be a, a top candidate for player of the year in the Big Ten, um, the way he's playing. Yeah, he's he just a guy that shows up. Right, like games on the line, right? Maybe not shooting the ball as well, but you look at the box score, 18 points and seven rebounds. Shows up, does his job, you know, good leader for the group, and he carries his weight, right? Carries his his, uh, his lunch pile, and like you said, Kobe Buff, and I think he's having a great year this year for him. Um, Had 15 points. Um, shooting, he's playing well for him. Yeah. Moving on. Yesterday we took on the 18th ranked, Badgers and man did man did we show up and show out. Now usually we're recognized for our in, intensity on defense or in the rebounding department, but boy did we have a time last night. The Spartans, Big time. The Spartans threw a party and there was a lot of string music being played and Paquitos being served. Shooting yes, 52% from the field, 53 from three, and 94% from the strike. Trap, let's be honest. Whenever you're that efficient from the field, you put yourself in the best position to win a game, whether it's home or away. Trap, have the Spartans hit their stride? Man, we on a seven-game winning streak, right, coming into there. Also, that game was the game for us to enter first place in the Big Ten, right, to tie it up with Purdue. That part. So that was a huge game. So a couple things, right? We were 33 for 18. We won the rebound battle by 15 rebounds. Like, that's a big staple for us, right? Like, Oops. to come in into Wisconsin, right? Wisconsin is always a tough environment. Like, always. it's one of the tougher environments oh. in the Big Ten. Always. The one good thing was they didn't have students on campus. So we were trying to find energy, right? They were trying to find energy. And they were missing their star player in Tyler Wall. So it was important for us to come in there and get this win. And again, our veteran leadership, man. I, I can't talk about our veteran leadership enough where we have continued to step up at the right times and the right moments Different guys inside that huddle, you know, are coming together during some tough times and we're figuring it out. I'm saying we were down five with four minutes to go, right? And it looked like they were taking it home. If you in Wisconsin and you've been <laughs> we even played in Wisconsin, oh, you man. down five with four minutes to that's, go. That's a scary right? It's tough. On top of that, Ray, check this out. So we have 14 turnovers. Wisconsin had five turnovers. We know if you play Wisconsin, they're a low turnover team. Okay. So having five turnovers is ideal for them. Having 14 turnovers is tough to win there. But the last, what, I think the last nine minutes of the game, we only had one turnover. Yeah. Right? That's very, that's very important for us to win on the road and, exact, and very important for us to win at Wisconsin. So a couple guys that I thought was really good, right, and we, we talked about this. So, Joey, Joe, Joe. Joey, 20, 20 points, six for eight from the field goal, two for three from the three-point, and eight rebounds. Also, that was a home game for him. So he stepped up after the last two games, right? He hasn't played as well. Like we said, he's been going through a tough stretch. He was seven for 23 from the field goal and three for 14 in the last two games. So for him to come back and do what he did was huge, right? And then A.J., 10 points, 8 assists, right? Still leading the team, being that engine. And Tyson Walker, 13 points. 3 from 3 from the three-point line. Goes back to what you just said with how well we shot the ball, 7 for 13 from the three-point line for this game, 
Like, we had some guys really step up and make some great plays for us. Yeah, I, I, I agree 100%, man. Joey is, Joey is a coach's dream. He, play, he just plays the game the right way. He doesn't force shots. He's patient in the post. And he consistently gets to his spots on the floor. Um, and I, like I said before, I can't, I can't speak more highly of, of what AJ is doing on the floor. As a leader, it seems like him being the floor general, he's constantly stepping up in crucial moments, whether it's knocking down free throws, like I said, to seal the, to, to st- seal the game late. Or um, just making the right read and getting and getting others involved, man. He's uh he's getting the job done, man, on, on both ends of the floor. And speaking of both ends of the floor, for that defensive player of the game, I got I got Jaden Atkins again, man. This guy is relentless. I think the second play of the game, this man, it was a down screen. He avoided the down screen. He was trailing his man about two steps. Still recover and was able to deny the entry pass to the wing. That just tells you how much effort he puts on every play on the defensive end. This guy is, like you said, man, he, he's very capable of being a defensive player of the year in the Big Ten um, in the near future. Yeah, man, kind of like you said, I just love his intensity. A correction on my stats. Well, we had 14 turnovers for the game, but the – but we had one turnover in the final six minutes, not the last nine minutes, which, again, is important times and winning time for us. But the second with you, I agree with you, man. I think that uh, Jaden had a great defensive game, kind of my unsung hero, right? It kind of mixed together. Jaden had a great defensive game, his intensity, his physicality, all these things, right? When he is in that, when he's in that level and that focus level, it just takes our defensive, you know, um, our defensive schemes and – our defensive mentality to a whole nother level. But another guy, man, who was kind of like an unsung hero to me was Carson Cooper. Didn't score the basketball, freshman, spotty minutes, but he played 12 minutes. He came in, played some great defense, had some really good stops for us. So yeah, he I'm excited. The- I was happy for him. Yeah, he came in and played some, had some really good minutes for us, which was great. What, what, Trav, what, what is your fondest memory playing against Wisconsin? when you were at Michigan State? Yo, so the best memory, I don't know if this is yours, but I, I, I would I was second that I think it is. It was sure. my sophomore year, your freshman year. For sure. At the Breslin. At the They're the number one team in the country. At the Alondo Br- Tucker. Um, and Taylor. they had a whole – Taylor, like they had a whole load of guys, and I just remember that game, the famous – Drew Nice will bounce, 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 um, go in the basket. I remember stripping Alondo Tucker when him pulling up for a three. Uh, and I remember rushing the court. Right, we rushed the court that game. And that was huge for us because that your freshman year, my sophomore year, we were still kind of finding our identity. We were. Right? So we were. when we had that game, that was one of those games for us to be like, hey, we're good. Right. We just got to keep working and getting better. So that's, it. that's probably one of my best memories, you know, at Michigan State. One of them, one of them. We oh, had some for great sure. ones. Hands down, that was, the, that was the exact memory that I was thinking of, man. Being able to, to be the number one seed in, in uh, Wisconsin that year with a, with a loaded team that they had was amazing, man. And just, just being a part of that and, and everybody rushing, the, his own rushing the, the court, man, it was, it was man. a beautiful thing. Um, Crazy, but but shout out to Orlando Tucker, man. I was a freshman. He I, was Orlando a, a senior. He was a senior, he was man. Senior. He was one of the coldest dudes. I I can't even lie. When I'm t- when I tell you how cold Orlando Tucker was, man, he was insane. He he could literally score on all three levels. He all three po- levels, right? Remember they ran that flex. Oh my God, he could post that, that you post up. up. Yeah, he, he could post you up. He could shoot the midi, and he could knock down a three. I, yeah, I, I, I tell people this story all the time. Uh, he was probably my toughest cover as a freshman, besides mm. KD. Um, mm. It was so tough because he was in a rhythm early. Like he, I, I feel like the first couple buckets, it was in the post. They ran the flex, like you said. He got it, got an easy bucket, got him going. Just seeing the ball go through the rim. 
And man, when I say he was comfortable, he was comfortable. I remember, Trav, him coming down and pulling up for a transition three, knocking it down, and he was sinking. He was running back and he was singing a song. I said, yeah. man, this he is way too comfortable. He is he is backpedaling, singing a song. And I said, man, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think he ended up with an easy 20. Um, but they got yeah, the loss. They got the loss. Well, they, t- they, they took the L. They and took and the it L. speaks about like those Wisconsin teams, they were so tough because they always had some veteran leadership. Oh man. They ran their offense, and like we talked about, Bo, Bo even Ryan, with a new coach, they don't turn the ball over. Oh, Ryan doesn't so get their credit. Yeah, man. So they when you're valuing possessions. And again, the game is not so. They're one of the teams that, like, we go in and we're saying we're going to run. You don't run on Wisconsin. They make <laughs> yeah. it a half court game. Yeah. You're going to have to execute. You're going to have to box out. It's going to be physical. And at their gym, right, it's going to be that older, loyal Wisconsin fan. And they're going <laughs> to pack the house, right? And you're going to be looking in the stands. You're going to see a grandma or a grandpa, and they're going to be looking at you screaming and hollering, and you're going to oh be like, God. but they got great fans. They're nice. Some of the some right? of the loyal fans. They loyal, but you look at and you like, is she like 80 and screaming? Man. man. Like, it's an 80-year-old and it's the, wife, it's the husband and wife, 80 and 85, <laughs> and they it. got the same type of intensity. So That's just it. a great environment, hard place to win. And, again, they were number 18th in the country. So for us to get that win – is very big for our tournament resume. For sure, for sure. Let's head in now and, and do this preview, this Illinois preview, man. Illinois is coming in at 11 and five, um, two and three in the Big Ten. Um, they average about 77 points per game and they keep opponents to, to 63 points. So um, like we said before, man, these guys are gonna come out and be ready to play. Uh, Chester Frazier, who is a part of the staff now, um, who was also a uh, Illinois al- alumni? Um, he is going to have these guys ready to play. He's going to set the tone. I know he is because that's just the dog in him. And uh, I'm looking forward to this game, man. They they got some they got some monsters on the other side, and, and Terrence Shannon and then Coleman Hawkins, who uh, averages ten points, six rebounds, and is leading the team in assists along with rebounds. So. They have some players, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this matchup between um, Illinois and, and Michigan State. Yeah, like you said, man, this is going to be a tough matchup. Illinois right now, they're 8-1 at home. You're inside the Big Ten season, and as we know, like those games are really hard. Like I said before, was in the last five games, the last four out of five games for us, the game has been decided by single digits. So we know we're coming into a tough environment. Great student section. By that time, all the students probably should be back, back in school. So that's going to be a different type of atmosphere. And just those guys continuing to build. They just had a great game against Nebraska. They won by 26. Like you said, Terrence, Terrence Shannon Jr., athletic, strong, their go-to guy. Transfer from Texas Tech. Sorry to cut you off, Trap. Do you, yep. rem- do you remember Dar Tucker? Yeah, Dar. Sag nasty. Sag nasty. Bill, Bill, Bill like a Greek god. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, yeah. Terrence Shannon reminds me so much of Dar Tucker. Athletic, can put the ball on the floor, makes plays all over the court. This guy is a stud, man. I, I think we definitely going to have to keep our eyes on, on Terrence Shannon Jr. Um, because he's going he's gonna to come out and try to punch us right in the face. Uh, yeah, like Terrence, Ter- think about this, right? And you're right. He's coming out to punch us in the face. This dude in, in, in the 16 games, he has shot, attempted 104 free throw attempts. He's getting to the line, attempt 6.5 attempts a game, shooting at 76%. So, so like you know this dude means. is, co- oh man, he's coming at you. He's coming yeah, at you. Average of 18 points, 34% from the three point line. Attempting about 5.5 a game. So this ain't a, this dude is attacking you, trying to take you and take you into the paint, put his body on you, and he also shooting the three ball 
had a solid clip, 34%, right? Can be a little bit better, but he averaged at 18. So I'm sure those shots that he's taking are challenge shots. It's not like it's a walk in the park. Wow. So, like, we got, we, we got our hands cut out, not only for that guy, right? This is another great thing about them. They got five guys averaging almost 10 plus points. For sure. Right? Two guys are like 9.8 nah, for the yeah. analytic guys, right? I say 10, analytics 9.8. <laughs> but they got five, they got five guys averaging close to 10 points. The freshman, I like the freshman. This dude Jaden Epps. Like the last five games, he's been in double figures. For the season, he's shooting 37.5% from the three on four attempts, averaging 9.8. But the last five games, he's been at like 12 points a game. He's playing really well for them, doing some good things. So I like him. I'm excited for us because I think we're on this seven-game win streak. We're stepping into this arena, and I think it's a great opportunity for us to get set up for another big game. But as you know, this week of practice, oh. these next couple of days of practice, Izzo is going oh to be gosh. on their ass. Because it's so easy for us to be looking past them, right, and saying, let's get prepared for Purdue. So this week of practice, man, is very Nothing. important, not only for us to go in there and win, but for our psyche, right, to understand, like, hey, we got veteran leadership. So I'm really relying on our veterans, our, our, our older guys, to really bring in a certain level of intensity and focus to get guys ready and prepared to play there. Yeah, for sure. Cause, cause I mean, if not, Iz has a famous saying: when we're when we're practicing bad, and we're just not in into it. God, I hope they practice just as bad as we do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, boy. Cause that's the only way we're gonna be able to get this victory is if they practice as bad as we did. So shout out to Iz, man. I know he's gonna have the guys prepared and ready. Um. I will say they have another freshman that I like in Sin Sincere Harris. Man, this mm. guy is the epitome of Chester Frazier, man. He's a he's a mm. Chester Frazier 2.0. Shout out to Sincere. He's, he's a Ken Ohio guy. So Ooh, always, that's why you shot him out. Always, huh? It's always <laughs> love, baby. It's always love. Yeah. Baby. But yeah, man, uh. this, this young kid, he has the tools to be a very good player, and he gets it. He is the Jaden Akins of Illinois uh, basketball team. So I'm looking forward to these battles, man. I'm I'm excited just to see these guys play and get after it a little bit. And uh, we're going to see what it does. Right. Eh? We're going to see what it right. does. You know, the, the, the one thing about it, I was reading some articles and it was talking about just conference play. And I think we talked about this before. Or if not, like, I've always said this to anyone I talk to. Like, me living here in California, I've said the Big Ten is the best atmosphere right like because every game you're coming in bro and there's a packed house packed right up. like and even the places right that wasn't packed house for us like northwesterns those places wasn't packed but they were packed with our fans so it was a sellout still because our fans was coming there <laughs> so i think any place inside of the big 10 the atmosphere conference games there's just something else there and starting the season off inside of the conference play, it's just always tough to play, right? It's just a tough place. And I want to give Chester Frazier because he was one of my guys, man. It's tough defender. Like I said, he had that nasty right-to-left crossover. Uh, really good player, and, and he's on that bench. So I know he's going to have those guys, you know, ready to play and uh, ready to prove a point. And, and not only not only is the packed house, man, it's, it's the most physical conference, man. Yeah, it, yeah it man, it did. Playing in the Big Ten is like preparing for a WWE wrestling match. You have yeah, guys that are seven foot to six two, athletic, strong, and these guys are willing to beat you up all forty minutes of each game. So I mean, shout out to the Big Ten, man. It's it's a hell of a conference, and man, I'm I'm just looking forward to these upcoming games because. It's gonna tell tell us how good we really are and how prepared we we are um, playing against a team like Illinois and then Purdue right after that. Word on campus, Travis, lead us into it, man. Lead us into it. Hey, word on campus, baby. Those Spartan dogs are showing themselves. <laughs> hey, Ray, 
Them Spartan dogs. Yes, sir. We coming. Yes, sir. Seven game win streak. Word on campus. We feeling real good. And feeling real good with veteran leadership taking over. Guys are getting in rhythm. Joey Hauser has come out the two, the two game slump, if you want to call it a slump. And we feeling good. Beat our little brother. <laughs> went to Wisconsin. Got the dub. Now we going to alumni, so we feeling good, baby. We feeling good. Yes, sir, man. I, I can't agree with you more, man. We hotter than fish grease on the Saturday night of July. Hey, we are cooking. We got guys stepping up left and right, whether it's Pierre Brooks, Jaden Akins. Um, man, and then, like you said, the, the veteran leadership, man. Ho Hoggy is doing the hell of a job leading these guys. Wop, the victory, wop. The victory after victory each, each week, man. So... I'm very proud of these guys, man. They're 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 really coming into their own and showing uh showing the right way just to play basketball, man. They're they're, they're making the right reads. They're they're playing the game the right way, and you can't ask for anything more. So word on campus, Spartan dogs, we here, baby. Woo, woo. <laughs> Go green. <laughs> Go white. <laughs> yes, sir. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Beyond the Big Ten is a network of podcasts that aims to be your go-to resource for all things Big Ten. We cover the entire conference with shows hosted by ex-players and athletic alumni, aiming to be your go-to source of information and entertainment for your favorite team. Hosted by ex-Big Ten players, media, and insiders, our podcasts are focused on giving diehard fans and those alums an inside scoop about the teams and people that make the Big Ten Conference one of the most watched and most talked about conferences in sports. We're excited to talk Big Ten basketball with you wherever you may be. Subscribe now.